It's great to be back with you today. This is Raymond Mayfield. I've been an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God ever since 1974, and I've had credentials 61 years with the uh, Assemblies of God, and I appreciate their fellowship over the years, and I thank God for every memory, and all my life is centered around uh, Assemblies of God and pastored many churches over the years. And over the years, I've taught the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel in several churches and ministered several times in this area. And I want to talk to you about the book of Revelation today. When you turn to the book of Revelation, the first thing it says is a revelation of Jesus Christ in the very first verse. It is a revelation about Jesus Christ. John was used that he was treated rather rudely and then exiled on the Isle of Patmos and it was there that Jesus revealed to him the identity of Jesus Christ and also had such fellowship with them. He had showed him of many things that was to come to pass in the future. In the first chapter, it talks about Jesus being the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning of the end. And he is our all and everything. Everything about him is good. And, and then in the second and third chapter, you start hearing about the different churches and and, and the Lord instructed John to send the letter to all the churches and let them know about this information that he had collected. And he sent them to real seven churches that were list, listed in the Asia Minor. These were good open churches, and he had a lot of things to say to these churches. And uh, then you go on in the book of Revelation, that uh, there's the... Uh, there's an open door in heaven. I believe that's when the rapture of the church takes place in the fourth chapter. I believe the Christians are going to be the first thing that happens out of here, and they're going to be raptured. But then the seven seals are opened in the fifth and sixth chapters, and we get into the seals where it's the beginning of the tribulation period. It lasts for seven years, and it's going to be a, a terrible time. There's not been tribulation such ever before in the beginning of time. This is going to be one of the worst things that has ever happened in the world. It's real. It's coming to pass. And you go on from that and you get up into the chapters there. When you're trying to, if you're trying to go uh, chapter by chapter and analyze this and think it's progressive, a lot of the scriptures are parenthetical and you have to just uh, uh, study it because many things are injected all through this deal, it, it's something you just can't follow uh, chapter by chapter. But it does, and then it goes on to the 13th chapter and describes the Antichrist that's going to reveal and the false prophet. It's also going to talk about that Antichrist that's going to come out of the old Roman Empire. If you go back in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar had a, had a dream, and it was interpreted by Daniel, and the last part of that was the ten toes, which represents the ten toes that are going to rise up out of the old Roman Empire uh, that have been in the Roman Empire, and that's where the Antichrist is going to come from. Now, you can try to analyze it any way you want to, but that's the way it is. The Antichrist is coming from those divisions, and it kind of breaks it down in the book of Daniel. If you study it out in the, in the 11th chapter of Daniel, it's very informative. It also tells us about uh, the existence of hell, and it tells about the existence of those that oppress God. And I, I'll tell you, God is going to be the winner. When you go into the 18th and 19th chapters, you find out the great battle. There also is going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb for all the saints of God. They're going to receive their reward during the, during the time where they're going to be raptured. And I believe that's where that's going to be a great time uh, fellowship together. And as you get into the 19th chapter, you, you see that uh, everything that's going to be destroyed is going to be destroyed. The Antichrist is going to be defeated. He is going to be cast into the lake of fire and forever and will not give the saints of God trouble anymore. And in the 21st chapter, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. We're going to see a new heaven and a new earth. I'm excited about being ready to meet Jesus. I believe that's one of the most important things that we can look at today. So I want to encourage all of you today that are listening to this broadcast, study the book of Revelation. There's, there's a lot of things in there that's difficult to understand. you got to understand that uh, not everything that talks about beasts and things is sometimes uh, 
when you try to take things too literal, you miss the meaning of it. It's a lot of things are in descriptive terms, and so you've got to figure out the best of that. I believe that everyone that studies the book of Revelation can never figure it all out. There's things that we still don't understand. I've been studying for years, and there's still things I don't understand. But what I can understand, I'm going to apply because sometimes the Lord has spoken to us in ways that, that we he kind of critiques our interests so that we will be interested because there's a lot of things. I want to encourage you today that Jesus is coming again. He's coming back for his church. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, worse than the brother lamb. And I want to encourage you, study Daniel and Revelation. Uh, spend all your time trying to search out God. But the Bible says in Revelation, blessed is the person that studies and reads uh, the book of Revelation. So if you're blessed, I think we ought to do that. God bless you today and thank you. I hope this has given you a little insight in the book of Revelation. I appreciate you very much. This is Raymond Mayfield and I'll talk to you next time.